Okay, I'm going to attempt to break this in half. I have some uh, glass cutters, but let's just see if I can do it this way. Uh, normally what I do is I just take my glass cutter, score a uh, line on it, and then I have those pliers that you use to snap the glass, and I just snap it down the middle. But let's see if we can... I'm going to see if I can crack this in the middle. That's good enough. I'm going to turn on my other camera here. See if we can get a good double shot on how to do this. I'm going to be using the modern tools. Let's see. Okay. Now the glass is very, very sharp, of course. I'll be using some finger protection. This is just cut off fingers from a used glove. Now the other pieces are down here. Actually, I think I like this one better. Just treat it like a regular piece of rock. Trim off the delicate areas. You gotta make sure I'm in view of both cameras. I can't see the viewfinder on the other one. So I'm just guessing. If this one doesn't work out, we'll just, I'll just film the other one. And once I'm satisfied that all the weak, thin areas are off, I'll just start napping. Now what you want is, uh, to make it look pretty, you'd want flake scars over both sides with none of the original surface of the glass showing. But it's not that important. I'm just going to, I'm not going to pay attention to that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and nap. Now this camera in front is showing you the angle of the tool to the work. I had some friends of mine ask me about doing a video like that so they can see the actual angle of the tool and the angle of the workpiece. So here it is. I hope it's Hope it's clear enough. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just zigzagging this edge to remove that flat spot. You notice I didn't grind or anything beforehand. So I'm using the uh, the bulb from the previous flake as a uh, platform. Of course you can do this with the antler too, but I think most of you are using the uh, modern tools. So, and it's also easier for me to demonstrate with the modern tools, so. I think I may do one video in the future with obsidian and antler. The hard part is not getting any crushing glass crushes easily. Although bottle glass is nice to work with. It's got a nice elasticity to it. Which means it actually does bend a little bit before it breaks. And it's it's excellent for napping. 
some of those flakes are going across. When it gets more narrow, I'll, sh I'll shoot some across this way. It's a little bit concave on that side, so I wouldn't want to shoot it right now. Wait till it gets a little more, get a little flatter before I start shooting flakes across this side. This side's easy, it's convex, so the flakes travel really easy across this side. Okay, I'll speed it up here. I'm just going to make a simple triangular point. And I'm just shaping it right now. Not really thinning at all. Now what I gotta do is take that curve out. So I've got to remove mass from the top here and mass from the top there. So I have to turn that edge. I have to be very careful about the glass flying up into my face. I do have my glasses on. But uh, those little chips can fly up in your eyes. If you're not wearing goggles, they'll get in your eyes. Especially with gloves. The, uh, the gloves are kind of bulky, so when you hit those glass shards, it will hit the glove and bounce back up. But it's better to use gloves with glass. Definitely, you don't want to have a piece of glass bothering you for weeks inside your skin. I took a little bit that overshot, but it's not bad. So that's pretty much straightened out on this side. Now I gotta take some mass off of here. Now with glass you can produce some very pretty flake scars if you're very careful very consistent you can pressure flake glass easily and uh, produce a really nice flake scar pattern on your point this won't be as nice I'm just using my haphazard technique random flaking Just to give you an idea of what it like, it's like to nap the glass. Now as it starts getting thin, you have to be very careful about how you hit. The glass is very delicate, very fragile, and you, if you get a platform above center line and you're getting used to not paying attention, you will snap it when you hit a platform that's above center line. This is kind of getting in the way. And when I'm when I'm hitting, uh, I do hit my fingers quite a bit, but I avoid hitting my fingers by sending a flake. Let's see if I can explain this. I try to send a flake not directly into my finger, like from here straight in, but off to the side a little bit, so that when my pressure flaker carries through it's going to carry through a little bit to the side this way or that way still have the flake under my finger but not right where the crown of my finger is because when the when the tool follows through it it could take off your a piece of your fingernail or hit your finger if you hit straight on if you hit a little bit to the side either that way or this way you're not going to hit the crown of your finger that's one way to avoid hitting your finger. Uh, the other way is just to back it up far enough that it won't get touched. Now that's not good. That's a big old stack. Uh, there's a difference between a stack and a step and a hinge, but I'm not getting get into all that. It's all the same to me.
whatever it is, it, does, it always makes it difficult to nap through a, a crushed area or a step. I'm going to have to prepare my edge a little bit better. I was getting quite a bit of crushing there. Okay. Now you can do this in sequence. You can go from top to bottom, bottom to top. Or you can do it random. I, I tend to do it randomly. Just attack the thickest areas first. I kind of like having a thick area in the middle when I'm in the very beginning stages. But uh, this one, I think I should work on it right now just to get rid of that, that step right there. There you go. Here's, that was a long piece of uh, glass. Long sliver of glass. Didn't take very much. Okay. Now I squeeze it just to get make sure I got all the glass out. I'll put the other one on too. <laughs> Now these are going across a little ways. Now that it's flatter I can start sending flakes across this side that has a part of the original edge. I mean part of the original surface. My daughter's been wanting one of these blue glass arrowheads forever. So you know where this is going when I finish. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about the flake scar pattern. I do want to cover both sides with flakes. But I'm not going to worry too much about the, uh, the pattern, the consistency of the, the pattern. Whether you can actually count the number of flake scars easily. Look, this, one's, this edge isn't too bad, it looks pretty good. But I know this back side is going to be a little lumpy. I'm being very careful not to crush that edge. Glass is a lot more crushable than stone. Now you could pressure flick this from here. But I'm just going to finish up with indirect. That was a nice flake. And there's a lot more grinding involved with glass, just to avoid the crushing. This will be done in a minute. There's barely any of that original surface on the convex side of this bottle bottom. I think that was the last of it. I shot a flake from the base to take off that last of uh, the original surface. Now I'm going to go to the other side and get rid of some of that. What's nice about the indirect is it produces long wide flakes. And you can remove the original surface fairly quickly. As long as I don't break it in half. We'll be okay. Sure. 
shaping. Let me thin this base a little bit for hafting. You can see in that other camera down there. See, I'm just doing some thinning flakes on the base. I do have an area that's crushed here. I don't know if I should take that out or not. Just bl brushing flakes. When I try to remove those steps on the edge, I just use brushing flakes because I can't I can't expect to send a long flake across with that crushing right there, so I just take small little brushing flakes, just barely skimming the edge. Okay, I'll finish up with some pressure. Here's an antler. Let's see. I have my pads around here somewhere. It's already 17 minutes. Okay. I'm just dressing up the edge a little bit. And antler's good for this because it really grabs the edge. You just got to make sure you don't grab too much and snap it. You don't need to grind as much with antler either. Saves you a little bit of time. I'm just turning the edge right now to do one final pass to get rid of some of that uh, crushing there. It's kind of hard to see with this blue glass. Okay. I'm just going to go from base, base to tip, pushing in and then pulling down. Well, that didn't work very well. So what I'm going to do is I'll zigzag it with the indirect percussion flaker.
That's good enough. It's not really completely symmetrical. Let's see. That's what I was looking for earlier. Two minutes. Okay, good enough. It's uh, very similar to a Guerrero point in Texas that were actually made from glass. Started out with a piece similar to this. Now I can put side notches in here easily with the pressure flaker. This edge is very sharp. You can make it as fancy as you want as far as neatness. Mine's not very neat right now. But both sides are covered with flakes. There's none of the original bottle showing. And the uh, Guerrero points were found in South Texas um, mainly around the San Antonio area. And they're quite common. That's it.